Fear, I believe, is one of the most destructive forces on the face of the earth. In fact, fear is Satan's most powerful weapon against God's children. You know that. He's come against you many, many times. The prophet Isaiah predicted fear and the pit and the snare will come, all, come upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Isaiah 24, 17. Then he added these words. He said, it shall come to pass that he who flees from the noise of the fear will fall into the pit, and he that comes out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. And here's what the prophet saw. He saw multitudes in the last days living in a prison of fear, in pits of despair, and snared in trouble and sorrow as no other generation. And the pit in Hebrew means a personal living hell, and the snare means a trapped feeling. And Isaiah is looking at our day, and nothing describes our time better than that. And can I tell you what the opposite See, we all say, what's the opposite of love? Well, it's hate. No, it's not. The opposite of love is fear. We are fastly approaching a day and an hour where the enemy is going to use everything he can against your mind, listen to me, to strike fear. I can prove to you from the book of Daniel where it talks about he will seek to wear out the saints of the Most High, that that's dealing with the mind and your battle right now is in your mind. And in your mind is all the fear and the scenarios and the what ifs. Are you listening to me? The reason why some of you cannot walk in the power of the Holy Ghost is because the enemy holds you paralyzed by fear. I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a spirit of fear that's trying to cripple our world right now. Are you listening to me? All the stuff we don't understand, we don't know. And you get all the stuff that starts going through your brain. And all, is this making sense? And then you got the spirit of the Antichrist that I'm going to wear you out. I'm going to keep attacking you with fear and blasphemy. And I'm going to question the word of God in your life. And I'm going to make you question whether or not you even think God loves you. That's what it exactly means. Verse 3. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Now, you what God's saying, look at me. God's saying, you're going to have floods. The enemy is going to come against you. And it's going to rise. He said, it's going to be noisy. The water's going to rise. And you're going to see fear on all sides. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have perplexity. There's going to be fear. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Now, how? Look at me, please. How do you deal with this flood? When fears come in and flood your mind, when you think you're going down, when you think you're not going to make it, when you think you're going to fail God, or you've not measured up, what do you do when the enemy comes in like a flood? You see, the Lord raises up a standard let me show you what that standard is look at verse 1 the Lord reigneth he is clothed with majesty the Lord is clothed with strength wherewith he hath girded himself look at me please that word gird is a military term it means to get clothed for battle and put on your sword and go forth and here's what God is saying when the, he, the, the, the Lord is picturing the flood, it's coming in on his people. And the heavenly father says to his son, to Christ, who's king, who sits ruler. He is king of the flood. That's what the Bible said. He's king of the flood. The Lord on high is king of the flood. Here, here it is. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he had girded himself, and he's put on his armor and set for battle. Look at me, please. I'm going to put it in one little paragraph for you. This is the only way I see for Christians to overcome their fears. You have to have a clear vision, a clear vision that your Lord and Savior is standing by. His eyes on your flood, his eyes on you. You have to have a clear vision of what God has promised here. I have not ignored you. I see where you're at. I see what you're going through. Look at me, he says. I have girded myself. I put on my armor. 
I have my sword in hand. And then read what it says, verse 4. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. God says, get your eyes off the flood, get it on me. I've got my sword in hand. I am more powerful. I am mightier than all your floods. I'm bigger than all your fears. Get your eyes off your fears. He said, I've guarded myself. I, that hit me. I could hardly sleep. I picture my Lord standing over me, sword in hand. He knows how far it can go and no further. He'll come and slay the dragon in his time. They say, now you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You just put your trust in me right now. Don't be afraid. I've girded myself with strength. Folks, you can't fight the devil in your own power. You can't win the battle against sin. You can't defeat your habits. You've got to know in your spirit. and You have to have this clear in your mind. I serve a mighty God who has a sword in hand. He's my strength. He's my deliverer. He's going to bring me through. God will bring me out. I'm not going down. He's promised to keep me from falling and present me faultless before His throne with exceeding great joy. Psalm 69. Beloved, every time a fear comes at you, take Psalm 93 and read it and read it and read it until you see it good. It will surprise you that one of the most replete and repeated and reiterated messages that comes from God's Word is when God speaks to us through His children with this one message. Don't be afraid. It might shock you when you go home and open up your concordance and pull out your blueletterbible.org and see how many times God issues the commandment, don't be afraid. When Abram is called to leave his father's house, God sends him a tweet, don't be afraid. When God prepares to send Moses to Pharaoh, Elijah to Azehiah, Jeremiah to the children of Israel, Ezekiel to the Israelites, he tells all of them when they're called, don't be afraid. Yes, God and Jehoshaphat are about to go to war. God sends Isaiah and Jehaziel respectively with a message to give them, don't be afraid. When Nehemiah stands on the wall, the word to God to him is, don't be afraid. The children of Israel prepare to enter the promised land repeatedly in the book of Deuteronomy God gives the commandment through Moses don't be afraid when Joshua steps up to leadership and take on the mantle of Moses before he makes his first leadership move God tells him repeatedly don't be afraid when the angel comes down to Bethlehem to tell folk about Jesus and John the Baptist Zacharias Joseph and Mary are all told don't be afraid. When Jesus walks to the disciples on the middle of the water, in the middle of the storm, the first words out of his mouth are, don't be afraid. When the women show up at the tomb of a resurrected Jesus, the angel's message to them is, don't be afraid. When Jesus meets the first eyewitnesses of his resurrection, his commandment to them is, don't be afraid. When Jesus converts Saul on the road to Damascus and he's sent to Ananias, Ananias is told, don't be afraid. When Paul is getting ready to speak to the church at Corinth, the Holy Spirit convicts him and tells him, don't be afraid. Because the Lord knows that if ever there's something you need to hear, it's the words of this psalmist, David, that whenever life has pushed your fear button, I want you to take a full dose of the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whenever you've got enemies circling around your life, you need to take two pills of though a host should encamp against me and wars may rise, in this will I be confident. When you don't know how it's going to turn out and you're worried on every side, I need you to lay down holding on to in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Now the amazing thing about the human conscience is this, that even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe what I'm saying. But even if you reject the truth of what I'm saying, there is rooted inside you a conviction which you can suppress with the years 
that which is there nonetheless, which is telling you that these things are so. And this truth is the truth which the scripture will not let us forget. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Raise your hands and thank God for Jesus who stands by your side, sword in hand, ready to deliver you from all your fears. Lord, we give you glory. We give you thanks for your utter faithfulness. You are our strength. You are our deliverer. We have no power of our own. We have no strength. It's yours. We turn to you, Lord, in full confidence, in faith, in trust. My God shall deliver me from my fears. He who is girded with strength, he who is sword in hand, will deliver me from my enemies. All my fears, the flood shall not overwhelm me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've lost your peace, you have a troubled soul, you have a troubled mind, we're going to believe Jesus to deliver you. The Lord has promised to give you peace, his peace. Listen to this. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He will keep you and he will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord thy keeper, the Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun will not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forever. Hallelujah. He will keep us by His grace. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Now the amazing thing about the human conscience is this. But even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe what I'm saying. But even if you reject the truth of what I'm saying, there is rooted inside you a conviction which you can suppress with the years, but which is there nonetheless, which is telling you that these things are so. And this truth is the truth which the scripture will not let us forget. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind.